I'm going to be speaking about feature store usage patterns. Um, we've seen a lot of users from single data scientists using us to large enterprises using us. And I realized that a lot of the things I've learned are not kind of common knowledge, and I hope to fix that today. Um, who am I? Like I said, like Jim said, a, a co-founder CEO of a company called Featureform. In a prior life, I was at Google, left Google, started my first company where I handled over 100 million MAU, did recommender systems, uh, fraud detection, churn, det uh, churn prediction, subscription prediction, everything. Um, here's my LinkedIn, feature form is open source. You can check out the repo. Simba, so, you might want to just minimize the, um, in, in the, in, there's a, the zoom, uh, the top right-hand oh, corner. Can you see that? You just press the minimize button on that window. Good, we're good to go, thanks. No worries. Um, so in MLOps, there are two problems to be solved. There's a processing problem and the organizational problem. And I, and we like to make a separation between what we call ML platform and ML ops. ML platform is about scaling compute. What that means is um, I'm a data scientist. I have a model that has to run across a, you know, 100 terabytes of data or whatever. Um, and it needs to have this latency. That's an ML platform problem. It's usually pretty binary. You either can handle your scale or you can't. ML ops is about scaling people, which is organization, versioning, sharing, everything that comes with working with people. So in the feature stores in particular, processing problem is you need 10 millisecond latency, 100 terabytes of data, streaming data, et cetera. Organizational problems are who owns this feature? What happens if you know whoever leaves the company or is the feature being used? Am I allowed to use this feature with PII? Um, you know, what features is our ad serving model using? And how is this feature defined? Like what's the lineage here? If you scale up without MLOps, you end up with something like this. I'm sure a lot of you have this right now at work. And so the goal of MLOps is to make this not happen. So I'll give a really quick brief on a virtual feature store. Everyone, like a feature store enables data scientists to define, manage, and serve their model's features. A virtual feature store aims to sit on top of existing infrastructure and solve the majority of the organizational issues without really focusing as much on the processing issues. We let other vendors handle that, like Redis, whoever. Um, and so we provide the application layer of a feature store. We kind of solve the feature store life cycle or feature life cycle problem on top of your existing infrastructure. So let's talk about um, how it really looks. So we have single data scientists using us. We actually have a local mode in, in, in feature form, which is unique to us. In local mode, your compute is your laptop and your storage is your file system. The feature store in this case is all about being a repository of definitions. It's Git, but it's Git that is feature uh, lifecycle aware. It understands what a feature is. It understands what a training set is. It understands what a transformation is. Um, so you can store all these things in this purpose-built repository. You kind of get that Git-like history of changes and you're able to progress. If you are a single data scientist in a larger team, that's often how we get into companies. Um, as more people from your team start to use it, it scales up very cleanly. If you're in production, um, now you have to have features by the pool. You have features that you're working with experimentally. Again, the life cycle of a feature is not just in deployment. And it's not just in your notebook when you're experimenting. It's both. And we think about both. So we make it very easy to be able to, we've seen that it's very easy when you're using a virtual feature store to simplify feature uh, deployment, to monitor production features and to unify that experimental production feature with that unified definition language. When you get to a team, this is the thing everyone talks about with feature stores. You know, enhanced communication, you have a standardized definition language, um, you can discover and understand each other's work, you get lineage, um, you get search and discovery, you get the UI or whatever, um, and you can reuse things. In our world, our definitions are immutable. So you don't have to worry about breaking downstreams and you don't have to worry about your upstream breaking. So most people, when they talk about feature stores and the value props, they're talking about just for a team. But I think it's way more fascinating at the enterprise. At the enterprise, the feature life cycle becomes much more complicated. It goes from um, being about, you know, like, hey, we're just sharing things to, hey, we have global features that everyone in the company can use maybe like a user embedding. We have team-wide features. 
You have individual features. And some companies we go to, it actually a feature can't be used in production until it's checked off by legal. All this is part of the feature life cycle. And we believe the feature store, and we designed the virtual feature store concept around the idea of adding that feature life cycle on top of existing infrastructure. We separate out the concerns. There's a concern, like I said, of the processing problem and the concerns of the um, feature life cycle problem. And we focus on the organizational issues, the versioning, the sharing, the reuse, the access control governance. So at the enterprise scale, the value of feature stores become the hierarchical search and discovery visibility. It's actually what you can see, which makes it interesting. The charges and infrastructure, and we have a lot of people who they have Spark in one team, they have uh, a Snowflake in another team, um, some people have Spark, you know, one Spark in, in one region and another Spark in a different region. They have Cassandra here, Redis there. We don't think that that really matters for the feature store problem. The feature store problem is, again, the lifecycle problem. You can sit on top of existing heterogeneous infrastructure and provide a unified interface. Think of like Terraform on top of multi-cloud. Like it's still the same abstraction. It doesn't really care where the stuff's going. You get governance, access control, audit logs. And like I said, the cross-functional workflow, the ability to define, hey, legal needs to sign off on this, or hey, um, you know, for this sort of model, can't use these sorts of features. Like uh, our uh, recommendation model for Europe cannot use this feature because of this compliance issue. So that's where we've seen the most interesting things. I think on either end of the spectrum, on the single user case where it acts as a feature aware uh, version control organization no tool and on the enterprise use case where you kind of build on top of the core abstractions of a feature to provide um, uh, a kind of the right solution for your organization so anyway thank you uh this is a lightning talk i think we'll be doing questions on slack i'll be there happy to answer them i'm on a panel after this so i probably won't answer them for 30 minutes but i will after i promise um and yeah feature form repo is there my linkedin's there um, feel free to connect to me and check out um, um, feature form itself. Like I said, you can use it in local mode. You don't have to deploy anything. <laughs>